Macarius of Egypt Greek, Hosios Macarios Omicron Egyptius, Osios Macarios O Egyptius, Coptic, 300-391 was an Egyptian Christian monk and hermit. He is also known as Macarius the Elder, Macarius the Great and the Lamp of the Desert. Life Saint Macarius was born in Lower Egypt. A late tradition places his birthplace in the village of Shabshir Shanshaur, in Al-Minifia Governorate, Egypt around 300 AD. At some point before his pursuit of asceticism, Macarius made his living smuggling saltpeter in the vicinity of Nitria, a vocation which taught him how to survive in and travel across the wastes in that area, street. Macarius is known for his wisdom. His friends and close kin used to call him Paedarian Geron Greek, Paedarian Geron which when compounded as Paediageron led to Coptic, Pitter Ujoron which meant the old young man, i.e. the young man with the elder's wisdom. At the wish of his parents Macarius entered into marriage, but was soon widowed. Shortly after, his parents departed as well. Macarius subsequently distributed all his money among the poor and needy. He found a teacher in an experienced elder, who lived in the desert not far from the village. The elder accepted the youth, guided him in the spiritual science of watchfulness, fasting and prayer, and taught him the handicraft of weaving baskets. Seeing his virtues, the people of his village brought him to the bishop of Ashmoon who ordained him priest. A while later, a pregnant woman accused him of having defiled her. Macarius did not attempt to defend himself, and accepted the accusation in silence. However, when the woman's delivery drew near, her labor became exceedingly difficult. She did not manage to give birth until she confessed Macarius's innocence. A multitude of people then came asking for his forgiveness, but he fled to the Nitrian desert to escape all mundane glory. While at the desert, he visited Anthony the Great and learned from him the laws and rules of monasticism. When he returned to the Setic desert at the age of 40, he presided over its monastic community for the rest of his life. Ten years after going into the desert, he became a priest. For a brief period of time, Macarius was banished to an island in the Nile by the Emperor Valens, along with Saint Macarius of Alexandria, during a dispute over the doctrine of the Nicene Creed. Both men were victims of religious persecution by the followers of then Bishop Lucius of Alexandria. During their time on the island, the daughter of a pagan priest had become ill. The people of the island believed that she was possessed by an evil spirit. Both saints prayed over the daughter, which in turn had saved her. The pagan people of the island were so impressed and grateful that they stopped their worship of the pagan gods and built a church. When word of this got back to the Emperor Valens and Bishop Lucius of Alexandria, they quickly allowed both men to return home. At their return on 13 Parimhat, they were met by a multitude of monks of the Nitrian Desert, numbered 50,000, among whom were Saint Pishoy and Saint John the Dwarf. Death and relics Macarius died in the year 391. After his death, the natives of his village of Shabshir stole the body and built a great church for him in their village. Pope Michael V of Alexandria brought the relics of St. Macarius back to the Nitrian Desert on 19 Messery. Today, the body of St. Macarius is found in his monastery, the Monastery of St. Macarius the Great in Seats, Egypt. Topic. Writings, the fifty spiritual homilies and letters Topic. Fifty spiritual homilies were ascribed to Macarius a few generations after his death, and these texts had a widespread and considerable influence on Eastern monasticism and Protestant Pietism. This was particularly in the context of the debate concerning the extraordinary giftings of the Holy Spirit in the post-apostolic age, since the Macarian homilies could serve as evidence in favor of a post-apostolic attestation of miraculous pneumatic giftings to include healings, visions, exorcisms, etc. The Macarian homilies have thus influenced pietist groups ranging from the spiritual Franciscans West to Eastern Orthodox monastic practice to John Wesley to modern charismatic Christianity. However, modern patristic scholars have established that it is not likely that Macarius the Egyptian was their author. 
The identity of the author of these fifty spiritual homilies has not been definitively established, although it is evident from statements in them that the author was from Upper Mesopotamia, where the Roman Empire bordered the Persian Empire, and that they were not written later than 534. In addition to the homilies, a number of letters have been ascribed to Macarius. Gennadius de Virus Illustribus 10 recognizes only one genuine letter of Macarius, which is addressed to younger monks. The first letter, called Ad Filios Dei, may indeed be the genuine letter by Macarius the Egyptian that is mentioned by Gennadius Vir. Il.10, but the other letters are probably not by Macarius. The second letter, the so-called Great Letter, used the De Instituto Christiana of Gregory of Nyssa, which was written c. 390, the style and content of the Great Letter suggest that its author is the same anonymous Mesopotamian who wrote the fifty spiritual homilies, the seven so-called Opuscula Ascetica edited under his name by Petrus Pausinus Paris, 1683, are merely later compilations from the homilies, made by Simeon the Logothete, who is probably identical with Simeon Metaphrastes d. 950. The teachings of Macarius are characterized by a strong pneumatic emphasis that closely intertwines the salvific work of Jesus Christ as the Spirit of Christ, with the supernatural workings of the Holy Spirit. This pneumatic thrust in the spiritual homilies is often termed mystical, and as such is a spiritual mode of thought which has endeared him to Christian mystics of all ages, although, on the other hand, in his anthropology and soteriology he frequently approximates the standpoint of St. Augustine. Certain passages of his homilies assert the entire depravity of man, while others postulate free will, even after the fall of Adam, and presuppose a tendency toward virtue, or, in semi-Pelagian fashion, ascribe to man the power to attain a degree of readiness to receive salvation. Topic. Legacy and monastery Topic. Macarius is a saint in the Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox and Roman Catholic Churches. In the Methodist Churches, Macarius is regarded highly for writing on the topic of entire sanctification. Macarius of Egypt founded a monastery that bears his name, the Monastery of St. Macarius the Great, which has been continuously inhabited by monks since its foundation in the 4th century. Saint Macarius's face used to be enlightened with grace in an amazing way to the extent that many fathers testified that his face used to glow in the dark, and thus appeared his name as the Glowing Lantern. This description was transferred to his monastery, and thus it was called the Glowing Lantern of the Wilderness or the Glowing Monastery, which meant the place of high wisdom and constant prayer. Today it belongs to the Coptic Orthodox Church. The entirety of the Nitrian Desert is sometimes called the Desert of Macarius, for he was the pioneer monk in the region. The ruins of numerous monasteries in this region almost confirm the local tradition that the cloisters of Macarius were equal in number to the days of the year. Saint Macarius depicted on the Camposanto fresco in Pisa Saint Macarius the Great, one of the Egyptian desert recluses and a disciple of Saint Anthony the Great, is depicted on the right edge of the Triumph of Death fresco in Pisa. A group of leisurely aristocrats and their animals occupy the central part of the fresco. These rich young men and women riding horses, surrounded by their decorative hunting dogs have gone on a pleasant journey. Suddenly, their path, somewhere deep in the woods, is barred by three open sarcophagi with bodies in different degrees of decomposition. Everybody in the scene, including the men, women and even the animals are horrified by this terrible and palpable presence of death. The unsupportable stench hits their noses. The abhorring scene of cruel truth dismays them. Only Saint Macarius the Great, made wise and powerful by his faith, stands above them all. The mystic saint teaches the youngsters a lesson about life and death by reading from the scroll. The Florentine sculptor Benvenuto Cellini was inspired by this depiction of Saint Macarius in his painted portrait. References See also Monastery of Saint Macarius the Great Hermit Saints Maximos and Domadius Topic. Further reading Topic. 
Maloney, Ga, S.J., Trans, 1992, Pseudo Macarius. The Fifty Spiritual Homilies and the Great Letter, CWS, New York, Paulist Press. English translation. Mason, A. J., Trans, 1921. Fifty Spiritual Homilies of Street Macarius the Egyptian, London, SPCK. English translation. Plested, Marcus, 2004. The Macarian Legacy, The Place of Macarius Simeon in the Eastern Christian Tradition. Oxford, OUP External links Spiritual Homilies 1-5, 6-11, 12-22 <inaudible> Macarius the Great Select Resources, Bilingual Anthology Schaff Herzog Encyclopedia of Religious Knowledge, 1914. Macarius the Egyptian. Wesley Center Online, 1. Volume 38, Wesleyan Theological Journal, Academic Article on Macarius of Egypt, pp. 103-123, 2. Greek Opera Omnia by Migni Petrologia Graeca with Analytical Indexes. Great Macarius work in Greek and English. Works by or about Macarius of Egypt at Internet Archive Works by Macarius of Egypt at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks